running the DOS version of Quake on my Lenovo Duet Chromebook using an app called Magic DOS Box. It's an Android conversion of the DOS Box emulator. I think it's mostly for PC, although I never use it on PC, but decided to load up a bunch of my old DOS games on this Chromebook, see how they run. They all run pretty good, including Quake. So I'm just gonna show you what I figured out so far since I'm new to this, but um, you got keyboard and mouse support. I am using the keyboard only right now, just for this little demo, but I do have a mouse paired up. And I also have a Xbox One controller set up for the game as well. And we'll talk about how I got these set up. So, here. so if you swipe down from the top and you hit that back, this will bring up the menu. Although, close this out. If you do, if you have a mouse hooked up, if you do the middle mouse wheel and just roll up, it also bring up the menu. Um, it looks like for most of the ones that I've tried out on here, it does a, a widescreen to try to fill it up as much as you can on the Chromebook if it's not running in a Visa 2.0 mode, but you can adjust it with this. We do custom and then we could shrink it back down to the I think it's 80% will get you to the 4x3 aspect ratio of a normal PC monitor but I'm just gonna leave it alone so we'll just back out here let's quit out and show you what I did and to back out of here you could either swipe down from the top and hit back and I'll bring up this menu. You could hit quit or you could type exit. And this is the menu that I've already got set up inside DOSBox. So bring up my Chrome menu. Let me show you my file manager here real quick. So I've copied a bunch of my DOS file games with games I own. So I've got my a folder here from uh, good old games with the DOS files, although the Warcraft that I bought did not include DOS files. I think that's a Windows only game, so that one won't work. But uh, Zoom also sells old DOS games, although the one that I sold me of MDK, that was the Windows only version. It didn't include the DOS files, so I had to download the MDK demo so I can test it out on DOS for that. And then of course, if you got Steam games, a lot of them, all the older ones come with the DOS files. but. For this example in this video, we'll be doing Quake. And this is my Steam version that I've got uh, modded with Quake Spasm, but since it includes the DOS files, we can use it here with DOSBox. So this is the program here. You'll hit plus right there. Go to new game, type in whatever title you want. So we'll just call this one Quake Test, just as an example. If you enable SVN Core, this allows a uh, emulation core that does save states where it captures your screen. I think it just dumps everything from memory into a save state like on these uh, retro consoles. So if you enable that, here choose, this is where you got to choose your folder of where your executable is going to be. So you back out to the main menu, we'll go back to Steam, go to Quake, and this will be the folder where the executable is. You can hit the checkbox. Down here are the settings on the kind of PC that you're going to emulate. I just always crank these up, but I put CPU on auto because I think when I did a benchmark test, auto is slightly faster, and then do the cycles on max. Although for certain games, you'll want to do this on custom, like I have a Jazz Jackrabbit on here, and it runs too damn fast since it's not, it doesn't appear to be speed limited. So I, if I, I for Jazz Jackrabbit, I have it on custom. And I got the CPU cycles cranked way down. But for Quake, we'll do that. It automatically emulates a Sound Blaster 16 video card for you. So it'll be IRQ5 DMA1. You can do Gravis Ultrasound, although for Quake, it's a CD audio only, so it won't be able to work on here. 
and if you scroll down it's got other features here if you want to set up a controller this is where you'll do it you'll set it up here and then you'll go back when you're in the game you'll you'll uh, you'll do a manual setup to register all the buttons and sticks on your controller for here for main program this is where you could pick your executable that you want to automatically run but on a lot of games you probably don't want to do that initially because some of them have like a setup.exe where you're going to be configuring your uh, sound and music and also your keyboard uh, keyboard binds so maybe just uh, don't do this until the very end so I'm just going to leave that alone where it'll just dump us into the actual game folder so you'll hit that if you want to edit this press and hold down you can edit or delete it and you'll be able to change any of these settings if you're tweaking them, testing things out. Yeah, I am using the paid version, I think it was $4. The trial version only lets you do one game at a time, so I think you'll have to keep either editing or deleting your um, shortcut here for games that you're messing with. But let's go ahead and go back into Quake here. These pop-up boxes are helpful. They're, they seem to be context sensitive into the actual screen that you're working on. So if you're trying to figure something out, um, you, um, well, I'll show you here. Let's go, let's close this one. Well, like, so for example, go to general settings. This shows you a lot of stuff in here. You can get more info on here by clicking on the on different uh, underlined ones. It gives you a little bit more description. So that's what I've been doing, trying to figure out how things work. If you want to get to the menu again, if you swipe down from the top, you can hit the back arrow, it brings up the main menu. You could also click right here on this help, and that'll bring you back to the help menu for trying to figure out how to do things. Close this out. But if here, so this is um, we're inside, it says C colon where you're at the root directory, but we're actually in the game. So if you go DIR, so there's the files, if you remember your DOS commands, you go to directory wide, show everything, and it's doing the um, Windows 95 long style file names, and you can see that like here on this Quake folder, it'll get the, it has a tilde three dot, but we'll just type in the executable here and you'll see that since we set it up for a 64 megabyte PC it reserves 64 it looks like this is what it's emulating right here so it's doing an S3 Trio 64 video card it does say it's a Visa 2.0 compliant and we got the sound blaster set up and right now I don't have a CD audio set up because I don't have the audio music set up as a uh, file that it can read so you can just hit escape right here bring you into the game so get in here and i've already done a bunch of key binds in here so i could play this with keyboard only we'll set this up in here Customize controls and just redo all your keybinds from default. And remember, you don't have function keys. And the mouse speed, I wouldn't mess with that until you do something else, which I'll show you later. But I do have the mouse set up. And I also have a controller set up, but it's on the other file. So I'll walk you through how to do that. So we can either swipe down from the top, hit the back button to get to this menu. And if you want to set up a gamepad, right there. You'll need to enable this, but right here is where you'll set up your left stick. And you'll basically, whatever you remapped your buttons for, so, so it's forward, down, left, right. You'll click on these to remap each of your sticks so like for forward I'm doing the WASD setup so W here make this one S this would be A this would be D 
so now we've got that left stick mapped. So I should be able to. And then if you need to so swipe down again, or if you have a mouse hooked up, you can just roll up on the mouse wheel. Get back in here. And if you need to enable any buttons, like the triggers, the bumpers, you're going right here. I'm gonna hit plus, so you can teach it. So I'm gonna hit A on the Xbox controller. It's gonna recognize it as number 96. And then we're gonna assign it to a key. And for me, I have spacebar set as jump, so I'm gonna make that the jump button. Hit that, now if I hit A on the controller, I got jump. So you could do that, set it up, although I'm not going to mess with the rest of it to save time. Um, it does have mouse support if you do have a mouse, but you can see we got the overlapping cursor. To get rid of this, just roll down on the mouse wheel. Roll down, it'll go away, it'll hide that, and now you can go in here and adjust your mouse speed to how you like it. The other problem right now is on old DOS games, they weren't necessarily, this is before like keyboard and mouse was popular. So moving the mouse forward and back is actually moving me forward and back. So that's where you gotta turn on mouse look. So we're gonna hit plus M look. And to get to this command, you'd hit tilde on Quake. And now we got normal mouse look, so we can play this like normal. But you gotta remember, when you quit out of a game, because this will mess up your mouse cursor for other non-chrome apps, so roll up on the mouse wheel to get your cursor back, and then you're back to like this, and then quit your game. Because if you hit down on here, and then you quit out of this, you're gonna lose your cursor, so just remember, roll back up before you quit out of this app so you can get your cursor back. Otherwise, for programs like, I'll show you here, like if you go down to here, this is not a Chrome app, but if you forget to do it, you won't be able to see your mouse cursor inside this program. So swap back to this. Now, unfortunately, I don't. I couldn't figure out a way of doing it where you could rebind the mount, mouse wheel for this. So it seems like DOSBox, Magic DOSBox, I should say, wants to reserve the mouse wheel for these functions. So roll down, hide your cursor. Now you can play like this. And let's do a quick little benchmark. Show you how fast this runs. It appears to be emulating a Pentium 100 PC. I'm gonna crank the volume down for a minute. So we'll let it go through this benchmark. Now, normally back in the day when people were doing these DOS benchmarks, they would do it with a uh, the no audio flag, so the sound card wouldn't be limiting the speed but I'm just gonna leave it on here because it barely changes the frame rate on here. And from what I understand, the way it's emulating, because this is um, the Heliotech P60T on the Chromebook, it's got eight cores. Um, DOSBox only runs everything through a single core, I believe, so 29.1 FPS is how fast it's running Quake. Here. And I think I said it earlier. If you want to back out, you could quit right here, hit this. Remember to get your mouse cursor back. Or you can just type exit. But I'm going to go to my other established one so I can show you the controller support since I already have everything mapped to here. And then I also had the executable setup. So you see right here, it's got the quake.exe. 
already picked no this one you'll see it has CD audio I was experimenting trying to get my CD audio files to work but it's not a supported format because I have the audio files in the uh, OGG as individual tracks but I think it wants an ISO image so hit escape Let's go to new game. So I'm going to swap over to the Xbox controller and there are some issues when you're doing this. There. To get rid of your mouse pointer on here, if you're doing a mouse, if you just hit uh, a key on the keyboard, you'll get rid of it. Now the problem with using a controller on here is there's no sensitivity adjustment for looking up and down when you're doing your uh, key binds. And also it'll be hard. You'll see like if I point down, if I walk forward or backwards it'll re reset back to center. So that's where I believe if we switch on to mouse look, turn mouse look back on that'll alleviate that problem. So if I could look down, now I can walk forward and backwards without it re resetting. But because the sensitivity on up and down is so ridiculous, it's really hard to aim with a controller. So I think it's minus to turn it off. So if you look down, yeah, minus turns it off. So, so for just testing out with a Xbox controller, We'll just leave the look strafing on. See, it's hard to aim. Yeah, see, like I'm looking up and down above him. So, I might have to rethink this, because I'm thinking maybe I should do look up and down with bumpers instead. So that way, when I'm using the right analog stick, I'm not looking up and down on accident. But let's switch back to mouse here. So let's put mouse look back on. You can just hit up on the keyboard to cycle through previous commands that you've typed in. Hit tilde again, and then scroll down on the mouse wheel. <coughs> Should have mentioned earlier when we did that FPS test for the time demo 3, 29 FPS is what a Pentium 100 gets on this game. And we're doing it in the default resolution that they did all the benchmarks on. You can switch it up higher, I don't recommend it though, because running off one core, it seems to be speed limited. If we bump this up, let's go to like 640 by 480, you're going to, it's going to get choppy, and it even gets choppy on a regular PC, trying to run this off a single core, but you can do it. It looks better, but it's not nearly as smooth. did some experimenting yeah much better and it also has screen tearing and I could not figure out how to stop the screen tearing I think it's something with how PC monitors are set up to run at 70 Hertz and this is running the screen on here is running at 60 
There's no, like, force v-sync option that I could find. back. So if we set this up for... I don't think it's in here right now. Roll down. Right, go back in here. Yeah, it's not in the menu right now for the cycles. So, quick... Oh. I guess I could demo that. So let's do save state because I enabled the SVN core. Click on that. Quit out. Exit. Hold down. Go to edit. I did experiment right here on custom cycles and I'll show you how that messes things up. Okay, go back in here, and you'll see it probably takes a long time to load it, but if we roll up on the mouse wheel to see the menu, you now have this cycle option, and you can see the numbers right here, and it's a little obscured, so right now we're at 3,000 cycles by default, and we could keep increasing this, so you'll see it up here, sorry it's a little obscured. But you see it's taking forever just to even load the game with such low cycles. But this will go all the way to 150,000. Or we could just type it out manually. So 150, 1, 2, 3, more zeros. Right there, and then the game will load up. So now we're at max cycles, but this breaks the game. So if you swipe down from the top go back, clear this out. Watch. See, it seems like everything's playing in slow-mo. And I think it's a... Uh, I think it's a conflict with how it's emulating the audio. But we can go time demo. Time demo, demo three we got 29.1 last time. Crank the sound down. I believe this will run a lot faster if you turn on the max cycles, but in, real, in reality the game runs way slower and the audio is broken. So now we're at 55 FPS on the custom cycles, but it breaks the game as far as like real gameplay. So I haven't figured out a way of around that because it looks like you can get more performance per core on here, but it breaks the audio and I don't know how to fix that. Because like you could tell this is, it's almost like you're in slow motion. Get out of here. And we'll reset that setting, we'll put it back to the way it was, where we're just on max. Fix that, go back in. And you could disable that pop-up window, I just leave it on because I'm still experimenting. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to go load state. Look, we're back where we were, roll down on the mouse wheel. So that's if you enable the SVN course. But yeah, so far, almost every single DOS game that I've tried works. Um, 
not necessarily with mouse support because there's a lot of games where you can't customize the mouse so like I had trouble with uh, Duke Nukem using the mouse because I think I could only go forward and back with a mouse I can't actually do like a true mouse look even though I think it was a button and switch back to the Xbox controller so it can be done but like I said your up and down sensitivity on the sticks Ugh. this isn't ideal on how to play this using an Xbox controller but the only game I've had problems with is go back to it let's quit out of here is Alone in the Dark. Alone in the Dark, I can't get to run on here. It keeps asking for a CD and I haven't figured out how to get around it, but the the bonus level on here for Alone in the Dark with Jack, that worked fine without asking for a CD. But I might make some other videos with some of the other DOS games on here because I got Gravis Ultrasound to work, although with Rise of the Triad it seems to crash it all the time, but it works really good in Heretic and Hexen. Yeah, that's uh, running old DOS games on the Lenovo Duet Chromebook. It's pretty cool. Like I said, you don't have um, some of the games like uh, Mortal Kombat. Uh, you need function keys to actually like start the game, save the game, exit the game. You don't have that functionality, but you can do it if you bring up the menu. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Let's exit out of here. Although, well, I guess we can show you something real quick. Look for the batch file. DK demo. Oh, I guess it doesn't have a separate setup file. I thought it did. But this one has a built-in benchmark, I believe. performance and like I was saying I think it's emulating a Pentium 100 if you just have it set up as max So like on Mortal Kombat, like I'm tapping the keys and nothing's happening. It's because you need the function keys. So I'm going to roll up on the mouse wheel or you could swipe down from the top on your screen. And we need to bring up a virtual keyboard, which is down here. So it's hard to see, but we need F1 to start a game. And what button was it to select a character? I can't remember. Was it Alt, Control, Space, or was it... Yeah, whatever I had was assigned to a punch button. But also to quit. Is it F10? Yeah, F10 to quit, so. So you need to do this keyboard to work around not having function keys on the included detachable keyboard dock. Pretty cool. And then like I said, you can always click on question marks in these certain menus to get more info. Uh, 